The Vintage Warmer plugin is a superb digital simulation of an analog limiter capable of both single and multi-band compression and limiting, while adding analog warmth and tape saturation. It comes in three flavors, the Vintage Warmer, Vintage Warmer 2 and Micro Warmer, all for use in different situations. Micro Warmer is a less CPU intensive, low latency, single band version of Vintage Warmer, ideal for use on individual tracks where less controls required. Vintage Warmer has a lower latency than Vintage Warmer 2, and depending on sample rate, this is around 3 milliseconds, but still offers plenty of control. It can be used on individual tracks where more parameter control is required than is available with a micro warmer, or if multiband processing is needed. Vintage Warmer 2 has the addition of PSP's FAT, or Frequency Authentication Technique technology which uses double sample processing for even greater analog type processing. There is, however, a greater latency of around 15 milliseconds, so this is more suited for mastering purposes. The interface and controls for both the latter are identical, while the micro warmer has a simplified interface. So let's take a look at them. For this demonstration, I'll be using Vintage Warmer on a clean guitar track and Vintage Warmer 2 on the master bus. At the very top are the meters with the meter controls between them. They can be switched from VU meters used for monitoring levels to PPM for peak monitoring. Controls for fine tuning the behavior of the meters and setting the reference level are found on the back panel, which we'll look at shortly. They have three modes, pre for levels prior to processing, GR indicates the amount of gain reduction taking place at any one time and post shows levels after processing and output gain adjustment. Included in the meters are overload indicators that like to indicate that a consecutive set number of sample peaks over 0 dB has occurred. The default number is 3, but can be changed on the rear panel that we'll look at shortly. Once the indicators have been triggered, they fade out to dark red to indicate that overloading has occurred. At the very bottom are the bank, preset and AB controls for loading presets and storing a pair of settings for easy comparison. Click on the red arrows to open the save dialogs for the bank or presets and the green arrows to open the load dialogs. Double clicking on the bank and preset labels permanently stores the default bank or preset respectively. Click in the preset name field to rename a preset and use the icon to the right of that to display the presets available for selection. The left and right arrows step through the presets of the current loaded bank. The AB controls can be used to store and load two different settings for quick comparison purposes. Again, the red arrow saves while the green loads. Just above the preset management area are the various control switches. In the bottom left hand corner is the on off switch to turn the processing on or off for AB comparison when the vintage warmer is switched either in or out. Next up is the switch that turns the FAT frequency authentication technique on or off. As I've already mentioned, this uses a double sampling algorithm that makes the plugin sound even more analog like with less artifacts. It will also affect the way the EQ crossover filters behave, especially affecting the high frequency sounds of both single and multiband mode. Just remember that as a result, the CPU power and buffers required are greatly increased, which in turn means higher latencies introduced. This switch is not present on the regular vintage warmer. The next switch changes the limiting mode from single to multiband. In single mode, the processor works equally across the entire frequency range while the low and high adjust controls operate as shelving controls. The high and low frequency controls set the corner frequency of those adjust controls. We'll see the difference this switch makes to the frequency controls later when we switch to multiband mode. Next up is the Mono LR Stereo switch, and in Mono mode, only the first channel is processed and the output is sent to both outputs. L or R modes are turned on by clicking on the relevant side of the switch, and only that channel is processed. These modes are useful if you wish to process each channel independently. Just insert two instances of Vintage Warmer and switch one to the left channel and the other to the right. In Stereo mode, both channels are processed. Stereo is best switched off though when processing mono channels to conserve processing power. 
The link switch controls whether the same level detector for each channel is used or not. This switch does not affect the settings directly, only at which point they are applied to each channel, either equally when in linked mode or separately based on each channel's level. Unlinked also uses more processing power. Now let's take a look at the main controls and see how they affect the processing. Just to the left centre of the display is the parameter display that shows the value of the current parameter in its relative unit. That may be either decibels, percentage or hertz. Moving the cursor over control will show that parameter's current value, but in some hosts you may need to click on the control first. Above that is the drive control. This is what's used to adjust the input level to the limiter. As this increases, it effectively controls how much gain reduction and distortion takes place, dependent on other parameter settings. Like most of the controls, Control plus left click on a PC or Command and click on a Mac will reset the parameter to its default value. The knee control sets the range over which limiting takes place. At 0% the knee is hard and no compression will happen until the signal level is very close to the ceiling at which stage compression is applied. Increasing this control widens the range over which compression happens until at 100% compression takes place over a wide signal level range allowing a deep fast compression. Let's see and hear that in action. I'll set the drive control so that initially very little gain reduction takes place on the hard knee setting. Only the very high peaks are being compressed. You'll see the meters indicate that overall gain reduction increases as it starts to compress the signal at a lower level as the working range of the compressor is widened. At 100%, the effective range of the compressor is so great that it barely releases before the compressor re-engages on the next transients. The attack and release times are controlled overall by the speed control. The name refers to tape speed, with zero being the slowest tape speed, which has the fastest compression times, and 100% the slower, smoother compression time. You can clearly hear that distortion occurs much quicker as the speed control is reduced and smooths out as it's increased. The release control adjusts the release time as a multiplier factor relative to the speed control. Default is 1, but fast release times can be achieved by reducing this parameter, or longer ones by increasing it. The button labelled long increases the release multiplier times to a second range, which starts where the first range ends at 4 and allows a maximum of 16 times the original release phase time. You'll see and hear that as I toggle the button. On this maximum second range setting, the release phase becomes so long that it never fully releases before the next transient triggers the gain reduction stage. Auto will set the release time based on the current material, dynamically adjusting the release time as necessary. The speed control still governs the basis for this release time though, and higher speed settings will still result in slower release times, albeit dynamically adjusted times, if this button is active. The ceiling parameter allows the vintage warmer to start to operate at different maximum levels other than 0 dB, similar to how a threshold control works. Reducing this control will cause compression to take place earlier, while increasing it allows higher signals before compression. It's designed to prevent normalised signals exceeding 0 dB, regardless of the ceiling setting. It also interacts with the saturation controls on the back panel, and we'll look at those later when in multiband mode. The brick wall button, when turned on, ensures that no clipping takes place. 
mix controls the ratio of the processed to unprocessed signal. At 0%, only the original signal is heard, and at 100%, only the processed signal. In between these two extremes, the signals can be mixed as required. For example, you may want to allow some of the original transient peaks to be heard unprocessed. Output is the final stage in the processor and sets signal level that's returned to the host. Above these two controls are the low and high frequency controls, which as mentioned earlier, vary their function depending on the mode set by the single or multi-mode switch. In single mode, the filters are shelving types, allowing the high and low frequencies to be cut or boosted using the adjust parameter to set the gain levels, while the corresponding frequency control sets the corner frequency for each filter. You'll clearly hear the effect of each as I increase and decrease the levels of each filter at fairly extreme settings and adjust their corresponding corner frequencies. To demonstrate their function in multiband mode and take a look at the rear panel controls, we'll swap to the vintage Warmer 2 that's on my master bus. First let's take a look at the rear panel accessed by clicking on the vintage Warmer logo towards the bottom of the display. The pairs of controls in the centre boxes can be used to set the ballistics of the VU and peak meters as well as needle return times and reference level for the VU meter. The level for reference set here in decibels is what will equal 0 dB on the VU meter. The overs counter sets the number of successive sample peaks that need to be reached before the overload light will light in the meter display. Fine adjust allows us to set different operating ranges for the drive, low adjust, high adjust, ceiling and output parameters. All of these controls are stored as global preference settings. The saturation controls at the top left set the saturation level for each of the three bands in multiband mode and work in conjunction with the ceiling control on the front panel. Negative values will increase compression for that band while positive numbers decrease it. The parameter ranges in the vintage warmer from minus to plus 6 dB and in vintage warmer 2 they range from minus to plus 12 dB. The greater range in Vintage Warmer 2 allows for the output limiter to be driven harder. Overall control is achieved for the ceiling control on the front panel that we looked at earlier. The release controls to the right are multiplier controls similar to the front panel release control. These can be used to adjust each individual band's release time in multiband mode. Be aware that the multiplier factor set here is multiplied with the front panel multiplying factor. So for example, a setting of 4 here and 2 on the front panel will give an overall multiplier of 8 for that band's release time. Both these saturation and release settings are stored within a preset. To exit the rear panel and return to the front, click on the About panel. Now let's take a look and a listen to the multiband mode. I'll load one of the mix presets as a starting point, which will automatically turn the multi-mode switch on. In this mode, there's a difference in function of the frequency controls. In multi-mode, the adjust control still sets gain levels for the high and low bands, but the frequency controls now set crossover points of each band. This results in three separate processing bands with independent level control of the low and high frequencies that are sent to the limiter. This makes it particularly useful on a master bus when mixing or during the mastering process. Notice that as I reduce the low frequency adjust setting, more compression takes place on the lows, while increasing the same setting on the high band reduces compression on the higher frequencies.
You can plainly hear the change in tone as I adjust the crossover points with the frequency control. Finally, I'll adjust parameters to achieve a great sounding mix and then turn the processor off to emphasise the effect it's having. I'll try to balance the output to reduce the Fletcher Munson effect of louder is better. And that's the Vintage Warmer, a great plugin for adding character and tape-like warmth to both individual tracks and mixes, while also keeping levels under control.